I had two very exciting times in my life. One was my uh, four and a half years in the Army Air Corps and my proposing Senate Bill 100 uh, to the Oregon legislature. And, and both of them put me in the line of fire. <laughs> Well, you realize that when I, when I went to school and was growing up, I, I was a debater. And I got very interested, and I've always been interested in, in public affairs of various kinds. And uh, through, so both through high school and college, I was uh, a debater. And uh, I think the, uh, the high school years were particularly formative because uh, uh, my uh, debate coach was Alice Ingalls, who her father was the edit editor, the curmudgeon of the Corvallis Gazette Times, and we used to meet every Sunday afternoon in his uh, parlor <laughs> and discuss, discuss debate. And uh, I think this was uh, certainly laid the groundwork for, for uh, an interest, plus, plus the fact that I'd always been brought up with uh, my father discussing issues around the dinner table. Basically, it came about because I had achieved enough in the, you know, <clears throat> of an economic base so that I could afford to run. I had achieved some notoriety through the county through uh, my land use planning, basically the starting land use planning. I had testified uh, for the original uh, bill for to create a, a county planning commission. And uh, it was just time for me that I, if I was going to do anything in the legislature, which I had always rather hoped that I would, uh, to make, make that step. Well, I served in the legislature just one term, and it was, uh, I was elected in 1970 and uh, was diselected in 1975, so that I served two, two sessions of the legislature, which is a remarkably short time but uh, I crowded quite a lot into that particular time and because I was on the, what were the hot issues of, at that, of the, that were coming before the legislature. For me, the hottest issue was field burning. Uh, this is Lynn County, uh, grass seed capital of the world, and any legislator from Lynn County is expected to defend field burning. And, uh, uh, Eugene was complaining and had a, uh, a bill coming uh, forward that would uh, ban, give us one year to get out and then c completely ban field burning. And that was my job to, to fight that. Uh, supported by another Republican, uh, George Wingard, a very liberal Republican from Eugene. And uh, we were both on the environmental committee to who, which that was sent. and. Uh, we had to work out the compromise that, uh, that finally uh, happened. If you have driven the Peoria Road, you'll see the, the creeping sprawl that's coming my direction. I was out here just seven miles from Corvallis, and I could see that I was going to get be surrounded by people subdivisions, this kind of thing, and, and I was going to be put out of business. And this was the best farmland in the valley right here, and, and I thought it ought to be protected because I began reading how California uh, used zoning to protect their dairy areas so that uh, the flies and the, and the, the smells and so on didn't, didn't bother the residents. And, and, uh, and I thought that would be a good thing for Oregon to have. So that really has got me started also in, in uh, land use planning, which is, of course, the thing that I was, am most known for. Uh, Senate Bill 10, of course, was the pre-forerunner. And what most people don't know is that land use planning in Oregon really started from the agricultural community. It was the Interim Committee of Agriculture that uh, uh, proposed, and there's a there was a, an extension service agent, Ted Sador, whose name ought to be engraved somewhere as being the person who really got the whole uh, land use thing started with Senate Bill 10. Uh, 
and he organized, uh, he, had a, he basically made it put together a slideshow of sprawl and how it, it affected agriculture. And he went to the Interim Committee on Agriculture and, and sh showed them his slideshow and promoted that they do something. And so the Interim Committee on Agriculture proposed Senate Bill 10. And, and they got it through, which was kind of amazing that with, uh, with the um, times being what they were. But Tom McCall, of course, was governor, but he hadn't seized upon the, the fact that uh, uh, land use was what he really wanted to do most on, and it, but it didn't provide any kind of a support uh, mechanism for uh, Tom McCall had the authority to take over planning, but he had nobody to do it. So we needed a, a whole system of land use planning based on what the ideas, the, the goals of, of Senate Bill 10. Uh, the next step forward is what we were, we were talking about. And uh, I, I, I was, of course, in the uh, 1971 session. I recognized that nobody else was working on land use. And so I uh, suggested SJR 10, which would be an interim study in which I hope to be a part of it, and where we took the, all the, the, the general format of how it ought to function, uh, ought to be studied anyway, and, and put it into a, a form that it could be uh, actually put into law. Probably the most dynamic thing that, that's happened was Governor Tom McCall starting out the, the 1973 session with a blockbuster speech on land use planning and, uh, you know, Nobody could put words together the way Tom McCall could, and uh, this was very, very helpful. And then he had organized uh, a land use conference before that, and, and so he be built, beat the Tom Toms for something to be done. The farm community was very split. They very much supported the Senate Bill 101, which was one of the companion bill that uh, well, basically it gave all the, the advantages that I could find anywhere to having your land put in, into an exclusive farm use zone uh, with a tax break. And the tax break was, was very popular, of course, uh, and, uh, but it also had penalties for converting your land over. Uh, the, but anyway, the Farm Bureau was, was basically opposed at first, uh, the majority, but then has switched in the years since then to where it's, it's uh, the, the majority vote within the uh, democratically run Farm Bureau is supporting land use planning. The, re the realtors, I think, are still against, and basically the foresters. The basic tool, I think, were the urban growth boundaries. That was something that had never been tried on the scale that that Oregon put it in. And of course, uh, that's the thing that, that protects cities to stay within their boundaries and develop and redevelop. That's the big uh, advantage of, of uh, urban growth boundaries is that you, you take all these rundown factories that uh, get uneconomic, you've got the, the land-based value there to, to clean them up and do something productive with them. And uh, you compare Oregon with just most anywhere else uh, in, in the United States, and the core cities deteriorated, uh, became slums, and, and people simply moved out to the suburbs. And uh, the amount of land that's taken up, uh, even in places like Pennsylvania, you know, the Pennsylvania Dutch, protective of their farmland, but, you know, people have moved out there. That's, that's the, the thing that we're, we're working against uh, to try and, and save at least the best. Now, the purpose was to keep the best farmland safe for future generations. Still is. And certainly, uh, Vicatia, back when he was governor, there was a, a big outcry 
that land use planning was killing Oregon's economic development. And uh, so Vicatia appointed Staff Hansel, the farmer from Eastern Oregon who had voted against Senate Bill 100, to look the state over and find out whether that this was true or not. I think, he, and he put together a, a group and they traveled the state and they came back with a report that no land use planning wasn't uh, was was a help and gave a lot more certainty to uh, all all things land use and certainly cut out the sprawl. And, well, my advice would be to uh, count on working hard, uh, get your toe in somewhere and see what you really like, and then and then work up, and uh, and that that applies to both. If you're a, a bureaucrat or that's working for, for the government or, or uh, if you're going to be a, an elected official. Uh, as an elected official, you better first develop uh, a good public speaking. And I certainly got some training in that before and uh, don't show it now too well, but I think that really helped me more than anything else. But basically you have to have an interest in the kinds of, of things that are going on there and be willing to take part in things of that nature. So volunteer. Start in by volunteering at the planning commission or the, or the school board or those things that you can do uh, without any, any background and work your way up. That's, that's what you need to do is to be able to put your thoughts together in a concise and, and uh, intelligent fashion that you can bring people along.